It's a kind of a musical accident, I suppose. In, in the beginning, there was Luke and Ronnie and, and Kieran and Barney. And uh, there was this wonderful raw talent there. I mean, they were all unique individuals and each one had a unique talent to offer. And it was the combination of all these talents put together, I think, that, that uh, created something, something absolutely new and something that people identified with. It's become a, an institution, I suppose, really, the Dubliners. Uh, and I must say, I, I feel very lucky and privileged to have been around at the right time to become part of the whole thing. I think it's, uh, it goes without saying that John and Barney are first class musicians and uh, their approach and the presentation is down to earth. But apart from that, it's, it's the music itself it's tuneful and rhythmic, and the two together is a winning combination. It's like rock and roll, really, of the 50s. It was, you know, irresistible. The, the amazing thing about the Dubliners, I think, is that um, they seem to be, the cohesion seemed to be, seemed to be instinctive. Now, I don't know whether it was a happy accident. For instance, when Ronnie went, everybody presumed that's the end of the Dubliners. But I came in and it wasn't, you know, we started doing it as well, if not better than ever. Same thing when I left, you know, John Cannon, Paddy Riley, everybody. The Dubliners seemed to be greater than the whole of its parts. When they hit the stage, um, um, like, uh, it, it doesn't matter, you know, I mean, the audience are never aware of the fact that, uh, like, a minute before, uh, uh, Barney is in the toilet looking for his trousers or something, you know. This never comes across when they get on stage. Eh? Barney's probably first out waving to the crowd. They, he looks like, be Jesus, he's been there since six o'clock waiting to go on, which is not the case, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think it's not surreal, you know. I think it's... Uh, you don't... Uh, only at time they realise what a phenomenal uh, success the band is and the influence and the length of time the band has been going. Maybe it's the way we all look, as if we, we don't give a damn or, you know, <laughs> what you see is what you get. And what you see on stage, what you get off stage, it's the same thing, you know. Maybe that's part of the attraction. Plus, now, in the, I'd say in the last 10 years, we're getting a, a much younger audience, especially on the continent. And I think they're getting sick of all the techno stuff. And they, they're looking at these five, Men <laughs> with a kind of acoustic instruments, no gimmicks, you know, no magic light shows, and what what they're, what they're seeing is what they're hearing. I think that's part of the attraction. I remember when I was young, Irish music music was looked upon as being very, uh, you know, backwards and weird, and especially in Dublin, it was sort of like, uh, you know, oh, that's all stuff from the country. We don't want to know about that, you know, and then. Irish music itself, the people who played it, a lot of them presented it very, like, tied in with the Irish music was the sort of, with the pioneer pin and, uh, you know, the 1940s suit and, you know, don't, for God's sake, they had this word, they used to use it, it's very modern, you know, <laughs> so it, was, it was a kind of a sin to be modern, like, you know, and everything was jazz, it didn't matter whether it was rock and roll or, you know, or country music, it was all jazz. Fordon jazz, and don't be playing that Fordon jazz, and and like it was very kind of puritanical, if you like. And I think with Barney playing the jigs and reels, and John playing, you know, jigs and reels on the fiddle, I think it ho helped to break down that. And a lot of Dublin people thought, oh, geez, these are ordinary fellas, and they began to listen. Now, out of the whole audience, you probably got a lot of people who now don't come to see us, but they're more into the Irish music and in, in a different area. I think we've contributed a lot to uh, awakening people's interest in, in f the folk music that was always there, songs that people learned at school and become hackneyed with, with kind of Irish tenor versions of them being the only versions known. And we came along and did them in our own unique style. And uh, I suppose basically, in, in a sense, I think the Dunners are all basically good buskers because We've never gotten together and consciously came up with any, uh, you know, musical arrangement for, a, for any particular song. Quite often in the old days, um, Luke or Ronnie would come along and say, this is a new song, I'd like to do it soon. You know, we try it out in the dressing room and 
Barney and myself would pick up the banjo and the fiddle and pick up the air and busk along. And we'd do it then maybe half an hour later on the stage, you know, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I suppose that's, that's the main kind of contribution that we've made to awakening people's, people's interest and, and the rich culture that's there, you know.